one got a little sticky, like number five and number six. There were some decimals and some fractions in the mix. Uh, could be you could apply the distributive property to the fraction bars as well okay so for those of you at home you're distributing after you distribute on the top here then you also distribute the denominator here and here okay any other questions okay so I want you to take your notes out from Friday and also get a piece of paper for notes today we're gonna add a little something to your Friday notes Okay, last time we were together, we talked about the distributive property, but I never gave you a definition for the distributive property, so here it is. I want you to add this to your notes from Friday. So you're adding this to the notes from Friday. bottom of your notes from last time and then we're going to take some new notes today we're going to be factoring expressions Just a reminder, if for some reason you get quarantined, everything is in Otis for you, just like in class, except for usually around noon every day, I'm able to post the class recording so that you can see, check your homework and see the daily lesson. sharpened lens.
once you have this definition down, go ahead and get your notes set up for today. So our learning target for today is I can use the distributive property to factor expressions. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be factoring expressions. vocabulary just informally throughout this lesson because uh, there's a few things you need to know but we'll hit vocabulary hard tomorrow yes ma'am you're welcome okay so um, for what we're going to be doing first is because we're going to we're going to factor expressions two different ways. We're going to be using the greatest common factor and we're going to be using the coefficient of the variable. So I'm going to show you how to use the greatest common factor first. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is you're going to factor the greatest common factor from each expression. You did this with numerical expressions in sixth grade. Now we're gonna do it with uh, variable expressions. So here's your example. Here's your first example. We're going to do seven X plus 14. Now when you factor expressions, you're gonna find the greatest common factor for uh, the terms. So this right here is considered a term, and this right here is considered a term. And in this case, can anyone tell me what the greatest common factor is? Go ahead, team. Yeah, seven. Okay, so the GCF greatest common factor is seven in this case. So basically what you're doing is you're, go you're going backwards with the distributive property. So instead of factor or, um, or multiplying or it out, applying the distributive property that way, we're gonna factor it, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this expression. We've already decided that the greatest common factor is seven. So we are gonna divide both terms by seven. So now we can rewrite this as seven times, now seven divided by seven is just one, so you're left with x. 14 divided by seven is two. So we can say that this expression is equivalent to this expression. All right. So we just went backwards backwards a little bit. 
Now you can check your answer by then distributing out the seven. So if I did that, I would get seven X plus 14, which is this. So you know you did it correctly, okay? So let's do another example. Uh, let's do eight N plus 28. Well, what is the GCF for this? Wait. Four. Yeah, four. The eight is too high because 28 is not divisible by eight, by eight but they're both divisible by four. So since my greatest common factor is four, I'm gonna pull out a four. Okay, and then to decide what's left in the parentheses, I'm gonna divide both of these terms by four. So eight N divided by four is two N. 28 divided by four is seven. Now, here's that process I was telling you about. We're gonna check your answer. And I really want you to get comfortable with checking your answer because we're gonna be doing a lot of self-correcting coming up here soon, okay? So if I distribute this, four times two N is eight N, four times seven is 28. If these are the same, then you know you've done your factoring correct. You know that you're correct in your factoring, okay? So if you can go back and redistribute it and see what you get and they're the same, you're good. Okay, let's do an example now where we have a negative, okay? Where we have a negative in front. So negative six X plus 30. Well, whenever a negative is out in front like this, it is good form to factor out the whole thing, negative six, okay? So we're gonna be factoring out negative six. We already know that six is the greatest common factor between six and 30, and we want it to be negative since that first term was negative. Now really what's going on here is you're dividing each term by whatever you're factoring out. So this will be, you divide this by negative six and you divide this by negative six. Well, negative six divided by negative six is just x. So you know that this first term inside the parentheses is x. Now 30 divided by negative six is gonna be negative five. You could put x plus a negative five, but I like to have less going on there, so I just simplify it to x minus five. Okay? Yeah, Ryan. Well, whatever the greatest common factor is. See here, the greatest common factor was seven, so we divided by seven, and here the greatest common factor is negative six. Yes, yeah, Sienna. You mean write it like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the same thing. I mean, you're still going to be dividing both of those chunks. Okay, and like I said before, it is good form to check your answer. So let's do that. Make sure that we're good to go. So we got negative 6 times x minus 5. So I'm going to distribute it back out. So negative six times x is negative six x. Negative six times negative five is gonna be a positive 30. And these are the same. So I know that I've done it correctly and my answer is correct. All right, I'm gonna have you guys practice a few and then I'm gonna show you a different kind of factoring. Well, very similar, but slightly different.
Okay, try those. If you need some help, I'm walking around. I'll throw the answers up here and you guys can let me know if you have any questions, okay? Okay, check it out. Anybody have any questions for me on that? page then. Yeah, go ahead, Maddie. So basically it looks like this. So negative three divided by, or negative three X. We know we're gonna plot a negative three, so you can divide this by negative three and this by negative three. So you get X. And then if you want, you could do minus, and then this would be negative nine. But that's the same as that. Yeah, 
And so when I do this, I just consider this a negative 27. And I do negative 27 divided by negative 3, which would be a positive 9. So I skip that whole intermediate step. Okay. Any other questions? You guys have good questions. All right, flip your page. I'm going to show you how to factor out the coefficient of the variable. And I'll show you what that is. So I'm going to show you two examples. Oh, you guys can't see it. Oh, goodness. Sorry, guys. I'll give you a second to write that down. So let me write this example down. Now it says factor out the coefficient of the variable. Okay, what is the coefficient of the variable? I'm going to show you. It is this number right here. This is the coefficient of the variable. Okay, so what this is saying is don't worry about trying to find the greatest common factor. I'm telling you what to factor out. You're going to factor out this number that's being multiplied by your variable. We call that the coefficient of the variable. So if I rewrite this, then we can solve it. We already know that we're going to be factoring out a negative 8 because that is the coefficient of our variable. And to do that, we're going to divide both the first term and the second term by negative 8. So negative 8 divided by negative 8 is just 1. So we're left with y. And then 9 divided by negative 8 will be negative 9 eighths. Yes, Rhea? Because when we're factoring out, when we're factoring out a negative eight, we're 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 dividing each term by negative eight. Well, why would you say um, the Either way. I am going to show you one last type of problem before you go because you're going to need to know how to do this for your homework. If you have a problem that looks like this, the coefficient of the variable is a negative. Okay, so you do have a coefficient to this variable. It's a negative, basically a negative one, but we don't write the one there. So what I can do is I can divide both things by negative one, and it's just gonna flip the sign of everything inside the parentheses. So we rewrite this as negative, and this is x plus 19. So when you factor out a negative number, so when there's just a negative out there, the coefficient of the variable is just a negative. And when you pull it out, it basically changes the sign of everything. So it becomes positive x and positive 19. Okay? Yes, ma'am.
Don't forget to do your practice tonight, and I will see you tomorrow.